Yes, people, it's Matt, AK, the doc in the arena, the guy that will give you the medical take on sporting topics today. Laurel Hubbard, Olympic weightlifter. She is the first openly trans athlete to compete in an individual sport in Olympic history. Obviously, this has been causing a lot of controversy, a lot of back and forth from either side saying, is it fair? Is it unfair? And quite frankly, I've got a lot of questions from us subscribers in the community. Is this fair? Should she be allowed to compete with cisgender females? So I did the research. I've looked up some scientific papers and found out some details regarding the science. And then you guys can determine whether you think it's fair or not. Firstly, I hope I don't offend anyone. Secondly, um, transgender athletes are one group of athletes that I have not worked with. So, you know, I say that openly. And thirdly, if you are interested in this type of content, click like, subscribe, get involved. Lots of content coming, so enjoy. But let's get going. So, what are the rules? That's the most important thing to establish first. So, a male that's transitioned to a female is allowed to compete if they've obviously declared their gender to have changed. They are on hormone therapy to reduce their testosterone, also known as gender-affirming hormone treatment. And their testosterone level is below 10 to give you context of that number, uh, an average male will have a testosterone level anywhere between 9 and about 30, and an average cisgender female would have a testosterone level anywhere, anywhere between 0.5 and 3. So that's just to put the numbers in context for you. So those are the rules. With that having been said, the study that I'm referring to today basically looked at the effect of that hormonal treatment, so that um, gender-affirming hormonal treatment, to see how it affects body composition okay and it looked at a number of parameters but the main two i want to focus on are this lean body mass so that's basically what percentage of your body is not fat aka you know potentially muscle essentially and the second parameter would be muscle cross-sectional area which is essentially muscle size those two parameters are quite predictive of athletic performance and are important for athletes for example we know that athletes with a lower body fat percentage and a higher muscle cross-sectional area have greater athletic capabilities so those two parameters are important in athletics in general and if you take into account that laurel hubbard is an olympic weightlifter that bears even further significance so that's what it's looking at what's the effect of these hormonal treatments on the actual composition of the individual's body what were the results well twofold firstly as you can imagine there was a difference so lean body mass was down by up to five and a half percent muscle cross-sectional area was down by up to 9.7 percent and muscle strength was down in some measures hand grip and knee extension by up to seven percent so these hormonal therapies do make a difference and those why that those are why the rules are in place So the second question would therefore be the reduction in all these parameters. Would that put them on level playing field with their cisgender competitors? It's obviously difficult to say, and I'll come back to the limitations of this study, but the answer seemingly here was was no. The differences between a, a cis male and a cis female athlete in terms of some of the things we've described, strength, um, lean body percentage, you know, can be up to 30% or so. So basically, the study is essentially saying that while hormonal therapy can narrow that gap, it's questionable that it narrows that gap enough. I know you're, you're wondering why. Again, the science is debated. I do not claim to be a specialist in transgender athletes. Again, in this, in this study, one thing it proposed is the concept of muscle memory. And if you train, if you are training in a testosterone-rich environment, the state of your muscles would be different than a testosterone deplete environment now if you then take away that testosterone although you no longer have the testosterone the memories built into the muscle the cells have actually changed and adapted already and are able to reach strength levels and functional levels that you would never have had had you been completely without testosterone your whole life and it's the same kind of argument they use for people that have doped with anabolic steroids before you know should they ever be allowed to come back to athletics because the body has been changed permanently i don't i won't get into it too much because i don't want to pretend i'm an expert on this very specific subject so does laurel hubbard have an advantage in her olympic weightlifting over her cisgender competitors 
good question. The answer ultimately is we don't fully know. The limits of this study are that, firstly, it wasn't investigating athletes specifically. It was just cisgender and transgender women in general. And secondly, it didn't measure the athletic performance of these individuals. It just measured some of the um, physiological parameters that may lead to an increased athletic performance. So we haven't got any definitive answer. The research is ongoing. Is it possible? Yeah, it's it's very possible. I think long term, the IOC, what they're going to do is they're going to really revamp their guidance on this. And in the end, it will come down to the governing bodies of the individual sports and the individual people to really make very specific guidance for each athlete. I, that is the most logical way for it to go because it's a very sort of divisive subject. Um, really interesting from a science point of view. So there we are, Laurel Hubbard making history. Really, really interesting. Please ask me more questions. I'm happy to answer them. Again, I really didn't mean to offend anyone. So apologies if I have. Gender affirming hormonal therapy does narrow the gap. The evidence from this particular paper suggests that it doesn't narrow the gap enough potentially but we need more research very very interesting stuff anyway i really hope you enjoyed ask me any questions you need to ask me um, and i'll do my best to answer them i'll continue doing the research for you guys and i will see you on the next video 